Welcome, I'm Dr. Janine Bowering, naturopathic doctor, and today I'm talking about vitamin A and leptin resistance and how they relate to one another. So we know that we need sufficient amounts of vitamin A because this is really important for our circadian rhythms. There's something called melanopsin in our eye, and yes, if you guessed it, melanopsin is related to our melatonin levels. And this is really important to have sufficient vitamin A plus that signaling of that melanopsin to detect light, but also more importantly, to regulate our circadian biology. So this is really important for anybody who has difficulty sleeping, if you have hormonal irregularities, if you're gaining weight. So if you've missed my other video on leptin resistance, make sure you check that out. But that vitamin A is super important for making sure that our melanopsin is activated appropriately. What this does is that later in the day, it actually helps with that secretion of our melatonin, which we know that we need for our sleep, but also making sure that we're regulating proper body temperature, regulating our leptin signaling, and even our alertness. So helping to turn off melatonin by seeing that early morning light is part of this cycle, and we need to have sufficient vitamin A to be able to do that. And what that means also is that now we'll get our proper rise of our cortisol levels in the morning for that alertness so that we can focus, we can concentrate, and shutting down that melatonin. So if this process is not happening as it should, this is where we can run into difficulties with, you know, not feeling energetic in the morning, not being able to get our brain functioning optimally, and this down the road can lead to problems in terms of that leptin resistance and gaining weight and autoimmunity and leaky gut syndrome. So make sure you do check out that leptin resistance video. So studies have shown that blue light, so this is naturally occurring from sunlight, reduces melatonin. And in this study, we can see that the differential effects of the light wavelengths in phase advancing the melatonin rhythm. So this is really important. And food for thought, when we have artificial blue light from our devices, whether that's our cell phones, our iPads, even any artificial light that's plugged into the wall, and we have that too late in the day, this will offset our melatonin levels by reducing that melatonin so that we won't have that great night's sleep. If you've watched my videos before, you can see how some of this information really does tie into some of these deficiencies as well. So it's really important to make sure that we are getting enough vitamin A. I have other videos that share how to do that and how we get the best food sources of vitamin A in that absorbable form. Now, it's important as well that blue light in this study has shown that it has similar effects to caffeine, believe it or not. So so here we can see in the study that the comparison of blue light and caffeine and the, its effects on cognitive function and alertness in humans. And it's interesting because the authors were talking about, you know, the results of this study because blue light is just that stimulating as compared to caffeine. And they were talking about athletes. Well, should athletes really be checked like they are for caffeine consumption in terms of competition? Should they be checked for blue light as well? Because it does help to rev you up. So again, using blue light at the right time of day is what's important. And ideally, it's coming from that natural blue light wavelength from that sunrise in the morning. The other thing that blue light does help with is memory and cognition in general. So that's why I think Mother Nature design that blue light wavelength first thing in the morning in the sunrise to be able to have that effect at waking us up so that we can actually do our best learning in the morning hours. Now another interesting thing to note about these genetic variances that can happen can make you more or less sensitive to light and melanopsin has something called a gene polymorphism. So what's interesting for people like myself of northern European descent there's something called called a C allele and people about 30% of the population have the C alleles, especially from, you know, the Northern European countries. And this makes you much more sensitive to light and to dark. So if you're like me with very light eyes, this is something that yeah, absolutely. I am super sensitive to the light. And if I have those bright lights, especially later in the day, you know, if I try to sleep that and there's any type of light peering into the bedroom,
bedroom, I simply cannot sleep. I, my body does not shut down. And that's why for me, wearing, you know, the sleep masks is really helpful. And if I don't wear them, it does affect my melatonin and it does affect my circadian rhythm and all my other hormones. So just food for thought. If you have light eyes, if you've had some genetic testing done and you know that you are positive for the C allele, this will make your eyes so much more sensitive to that blue light. So something that you can definitely investigate. So if you have any questions, I would love to hear from you. And also if you've got comments, if you have an idea for a future video, I'd love to hear from you as well. Please be sure to share this video with someone that you know will benefit from this information. Maybe it's new information that you haven't heard before. Also, I love all of your positive feedback. So please give me that thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, welcome in. I hope that you'll subscribe and you click that bell to turn on all notifications so you always get my newest and latest uploads, which happens every single day of the week. And remember to always take good care of your health and do it naturally. Thanks for watching today.